Hey everyone, Hannah here for Finance and Fun Stuff, and today I want to go over our October 2024 finance update. September is always a big month for us. We go through a lot of spending. I have my biggest festival of the year, and me and my wife go on a family beach vacation every year, so it can often be a very big expense heavy month, and this year is no different. So starting things off, as always, getting off with the net worth. Our net worth has absolutely exploded over the last month. It went up $12,700 to $20,000 at the end of this month. Now, this is an obviously an insane increase over the last 30 days, so there must have been a big catalyst to make this happen. We are very grateful that Sage's mother wanted to do something nice for us, so she actually paid off the remaining balance on our auto loan, and so that just absolutely skyrocketed our net worth over the last 30 days. This came at a really great time in terms of building our net worth, because we are waiting for compound interest to keep compiling on all of our investment accounts, and we haven't been able to put a ton of extra money towards our auto loan, but because we now have that paid off, our net worth really, really skyrocketed, and even though we spent a bit of money over the last 30 days, our net worth obviously still exploded because she paid off the balance of our loan, and we are extremely grateful to be given this opportunity. We are very excited to see where this boost in our net worth will take us over the next few months. And I'm hoping that we can get into a really, really good place with our finances over the next year. So that way we can be at the point where we are at a very, very high net worth. And this money that we were given was just truly impeccable and really came at a great time. So now we're going to switch over to the spending portion of the video, which this month is going to be very, very interesting. So taking a look at our spending totals for the various category groups within our budget through the budgeting software, you need a budget. You can see that the first one listed here is definitely my wants. So I mentioned that I had my biggest festival of the year, Lost Lands, and this was certainly an expensive year for it. And in fact, taking a look over last year, it's about a thousand dollar increase from where it was last year. And I do know where a majority of this is coming from. Last year at Lost Lands, I succeeded in buying absolutely zero merch. This year, I did not succeed so well in that. I kind of let the temptation hit me. And because I was waiting in the merch line to get a very specific item that I wanted to get that was on the cheaper side, sunk cost fallacy set in and after standing in the merch line for three hours waiting for it to open, I decided to go a little hog wild for some limited edition items that I would not be able to normally obtain. Now, this was definitely a moment of weakness for myself because I let the impulse splurge come out and I definitely spent way too much money on merch that day. However, all of the items that I procured from this, I do feel very good about, and they are for artists that I'm very passionate about, so I feel good about being able to support them at a festival that I love so much. Also, it's worth of noting that how I got to this $2,600 figure here for Lost Lands, a lot of this is also coming from not being able to cook food at camp. I mentioned before as I was getting ready to leave for Lost Lands that I was planning on cooking a lot of food at camp and being able to easily ac access camp from the festival site was going to be a really great addition because I was getting there so early. But unfortunately there was a fire ban so it did not allow me to cook nearly as many healthy meals at camp and so that forced me to be able to buy more foods down in the festival site and that certainly does come with a pretty prohibitive cost. Now, all in all, I think this is still pretty good for what it could have been. And if you take the merch out of here, then it is under two grand, which I do feel pretty good about. And I do think I could do better next year. But I think it's also important to be honest with myself that this is kind of what I'm going to spend. And my minimum is probably around $2,000 if I don't buy any merch. So I just need to be honest with myself next year and realize that's how much I'm going to spend. Lost Lands is a splurgy festival for myself. And although it is a little bit depressing to come home and see this number, I had the most amazing week of my life, and I don't regret a single second of my entire time while I was on vacation. So now I'm just going to have to repent on the budget a little bit over the next few months. Next you will see our no matter what on here, but that is just the normal stuff, rent all that stuff. Then you're going to see our us wants category group with about 1250 in there. And this is actually really good for us. This was for the beach week that we went on. And this is about what we intended to spend. I don't think we ended up going over very much on this category group, which is really great because it means that we were able to properly prepare, prepare and plan for this vacation. And I do think $1,300, give or take, is a pretty good amount for us to spend for that vacation, seeing as this is the other one of our big vacations that we do throughout the year. The next biggest category group on here is wellness. It's like $1,150. So Sage's medication is $500 every single month, so that comes right off the top and that brings that to about $600. But I also had an appointment with an ear, nose, and throat doctor in order to get my throat checked out for the hiccups that I've been experiencing. 
and that was around $250. And then there were a bunch of other miscellaneous charges throughout the month in terms of health. So this month was definitely a very expensive month for healthcare, but I think we did really good, all things considered, weathering the storm over the last 30 days, and we're able to take that hit pretty well in our budget. So now we are going to be moving on to our goals for next month. So we didn't have any goals set going into last month. It was just to look at our finances holistically and try to prepare for the big spending that was coming up as best as we could over the last 30 days. I think we did that pretty well, and I think we ended up coming back with a little bit of money to be able to play around with, which was really good. Unfortunately, we did take a pretty big hit in our budget over the last 30 days, and so a lot of our category groups have gone down, and our progress towards being a month ahead has been slashed pretty significantly. So the first goal I have here is to work towards getting that month ahead again and bringing us back to a place where we want to be. So what this is going to entail is we are down around $1,300 or so on our next month forward category group that we stash money into until it's the next month to help pay for bills in, in the future. And this has been slashed pretty significantly. I would like to see this category group grow back up by at least $1,000. The minimum that we like to have in here is to be able to pay rent and our car payment. But now that the car payment is out of the equation, we could now conceivably get to the point where we could pay rent and all of our other monthly obligations within the next couple of months ahead of time, which would be really, really comforting. After that point, we would just be looking towards our non-set expenses and then our wants and, and things like that. And we, I think we could get there really realistically by the end of the year if we really diligently work on our finances over the next few months. So the first goal there is just to work towards getting that back up and putting towards a thousand dollars towards getting that back to a good place so that way we can pay rent a full month ahead as we really love to do on the first of every month the month prior to when the rent would normally come out and the second goal on here is kind of in line with the first one here so i want us to plan our means for the month on the first paycheck so we are looking to set ourselves up to get to the point where we are living a full month ahead on our income. And in order to do that, we need to get into the habit of knowing exactly how much money we're going to have to spend at the beginning of the month. So the best way to do this for us personally is in this month of October, we are going to take our first paycheck that comes through and after taking care of our immediate obligations for necessary bills, are going to take that money and use that for the entirety of October. October is another busy month for us and there is a lot going on, but if we just take our time and use what money we have at the beginning of the month, spread that out with as much care as we can over the next 30 days, then we can take the last two paychecks in October because it is a triple paycheck month for us and get to a really good place by the end of the month and hopefully recover our finances significantly and get back to a really good place where we can start living a month ahead again. And the third small goal that I have on here for the next 30 days is to reassess our health savings account and possibly take money out if it is necessary. We have a health savings account through my employer and we are diligent about tracking expenses and putting them into the HSA. Now, I do try to avoid taking money out of the HSA unless it is absolutely necessary. However, sometimes there may be a point where we need to take out small amounts out of the HSA in order to cover send some of our bigger spending that happens throughout the year. And I'm totally okay with that as long as we are diligent about truly thinking about whether it is worth taking that hit for our financial future if we need the money now. So I plan on fully going through the HSA, reconciling all of our transactions over the last few months with all of the receipts, tallying up exactly how much money we could potentially taking out, and then weighing those pros and cons with Sage about how much we should take out of there to see how much it can help us. Now, I'm going to be saving this money as a last ditch effort at the end of the month if we need a boost to be able to get us up to where we wanna to be towards looking towards a month ahead. But hopefully we won't need this anyway, but you never know. So it's nice to have that security blanket of knowing we can take transactions out of the HSA if entirely necessary. So that's all I have to say for this month's finance update. It was certainly a very spendy month in the month of September. Two vacations of the same month is just crazy and it makes our spending look insane for this last month. But I do think we did really well, all things considered, and we are doing good at being able to buckle up for the next few months and save some money as we are going into that busy holiday season, which is always a lot for us. So I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. If you want to stay informed about exactly what's going on with our finances and how they change month to month, you're going to want to make sure you are subscribed and hit that like button as it really does help the channel out and allows you to see these videos more often on your feed. Thank you all so much for watching and take care.